welcome students so we will proceed further what we discussed in my previous lecture we will proceed further from there and we were talking about the uh, adjustments <coughs> different type of adjustments are to be done uh, in the financial statements uh, after say learning how to prepare the financial statements without adjustments now we are learning about the adjustments and uh, we have learned about the first six adjustments that additional information adjustments mean the additional information which is given uh, to us how to adjust that in the financial statements and then finally take the effect of that to the uh, say profit and loss account and the balance sheet so i'll take up now the remaining uh, different type of the adjustments and today we will talk about uh, one more adjustment that adjustment is called as the bad debts bad debts bad debts means what is a bad debt bad debt is basically uh, a kind of a loss you would say it's a kind of a loss which is uh, 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 on the credit sales when the firms sell on credit they are selling on one day and uh, sale proceeds will be received at some uh, future date <coughs> so it happens sometimes that uh, 100% of the credit sales are not recovered part of the credit sales remain unrecovered and there's a kind of the loss to the firm there's a kind of the loss to the company and uh, that's called as a bad debt now there are two kind of the bad debts one is the bad debt which is uh, the company is sure the firm is sure that the bad debt has happened and uh, that part of the credit sales will never come back means that will never be received by the firm the person or the company who has bought from the selling firm they will not pay to the selling firm and the buyer has either refused the payment or the buyer is not in a position to make the payment back to the company to the selling firm so that is called as the bad debt so bad debt is basically uh, if it is given in the adjustments we have to treat it as a as a loss so uh, we have already discussed that profit and loss account is a nominal account is a nominal statement and uh, <coughs> we debit that statement with all expenses and losses and we credit that statement with all incomes and gains so it's a loss kind of a loss on the sales so we are not going to recover it so again it, it, will, it will also have a double effect and the first effect of this will be that this will be shown in the uh, bad debts first effect will be uh, debit side <coughs> debit side of p and l account or statement profit and loss account or the profit and loss statement we will show this bad debts amount in the debit side of profit and loss account this is the first effect and then the second effect is <coughs> the balance sheet and in the balance sheet we will show this amount as uh, means after deducting subtracting it from the sundry debtors so we will show one item there in the balance sheet as sundry debtors and less <coughs> will show in the balance sheet this is on the asset side sundry debtors are assets and we will show current assets and we will show these current assets sundry debtors after subtracting the bad debts loss so it is less bad debts so sundry debtors less bad debts and finally whatever the amount comes that will be shown in the balance sheet so your asset means current asset which is the recovery which is the receipt of the credit sales on some future date by the amount of the bad debt that receipt that recovery will come down so your sundry debtors will be reduced by that amount of the bad debts and will show in the balance sheet sundry debtors minus bad debts and the remaining figure will be shown as asset in the balance sheet so first effect is in the profit and loss account and second effect is in the <coughs> balance sheet <coughs> this is about the bad debts next thing is the interest on capital <coughs> next adjustment is the interest on capital <coughs> interest on capital interest on capital it is again a kind of a financial charge is a kind of for example we uh, pay the interest on loan 
So, that interest on loan we show it on the again in the debit side of the profit and loss account because interest is a interest on the, on the loan is a financial expense and that financial expense has to be recorded and shown in the debit side of profit and loss account and sometimes we are given a, an item in the adjustment that interest on the capital also has to be paid. If the interest on capital has to be paid, so what happens this is basically a book entry. In the real sense a firm never pays interest on its capital uh, to its uh, owner or to the shareholder. But if it is um, to be made a book provision, then we will have to show it in the books of accounts. So, uh, interest on capital also uh, is also shown like the interest on loan <coughs> and with that amount of the interest on capital we debit the profit and loss account. So, again if the interest on capital is given to us in the adjustments, we will have to say uh, make a proper record of that and we will have to take the effect of the interest on capital on the financial statements also. So, again the two effects, first effect will be in the profit and loss account and second effect will be in the balance sheet. So, both the statements, both the financial statements get affected because of the interest on capital. First effect in the profit and loss account will be, we will be debiting the profit and loss account with the amount of interest on capital to be calculated. That percentage will be given to us in the adjustment that interest at the rate of 5 percent has to be provided on the capital and it is like the interest on loan. So, we have to show it as an expense in the debit side of profit and loss account and we have to debit the profit and loss account by that amount of the interest. And second effect of this will be in the balance sheet and in the balance sheet it will be on the liability side of the balance sheet because in capital is a liability, <coughs> is a kind of a liability. So, how we will show this interest on capital in the balance sheet will be like say when we prepare the balance sheet which showed on the top of the balance sheet the first item on the liability side is the capital or you call it as the share capital. right? So, we will show that amount of the share capital like for example, the figure of the share capital is 1 lakh, 100,000 it is 1 lakh that will be shown in the balance sheet as 1 lakh rupees. And <coughs> this interest on capital with which we have debited the profit and loss account, it means we have taken that money out of the profit and loss account for example, that is 5000 rupees. So, it is as I told you, it is only a book entry. We never uh, pay this interest to anybody, only a book entry is made. So, on the one side in the debit, we debit the profit and loss account by this 5000 rupees and because it is not paid to the owner of the business or shareholder of the firm. So, it is added back in the capital here. So, the capital amount will become <coughs> 1 lakh 5000 rupees. So, you will write here add interest on capital. So, your share capital will become now 1 lakh 5000 rupees. So, this is the <coughs> one means the effect that comes in the balance sheet on account of the interest on capital. So, interest on capital has to be treated like this first effect on the profit and loss account debit side with that amount which is given to us and that because it is not paid to the shareholder it is only a book entry. So, we add that amount we withdraw from the profit and loss account and we add it in the capital account in the balance sheet. So, in the balance sheet the capital appreciates goes up by that amount of the interest on capital with which we have debited the profit and loss account. So, first effect in the profit and loss account and second effect will be in the balance sheet. <coughs> now, we talk about the next item is interesting item that is interest on drawings. Interest on drawings, <coughs> this is the another item interest on capital and interest on drawings. <coughs> Now, first of all, we would like to understand what is the drawings. Drawings is basically that part of the funds or goods withdrawn by the owner of the business for its personal use, owner of the business for its personal use. Normally, this kind of the things, this kind of the withdrawals of the cash or the goods and services does not happen in case of the company form of organizations, but in case of the partnership firms and in case of the sole proprietor firms 
drawings exist. <coughs> For example, now there is one person who is a sole proprietor, he is a sole owner of the business and he withdraws some goods which he is manufacturing and selling in the market for his personal use. Now that has to be recorded somewhere and that is called as drawing. Now these drawings when they are withdrawn, <coughs> only interest on drawing has to be uh, given the double treatment. How that has to be given the double treatment like, say for example we are given that total amount of the drawings is <coughs> uh, 10,000 rupees and we have to pay the interest on <coughs> that drawings at the rate of 5 percent. Now in this case if you take the 5 percent of 10,000 rupees this works out as 500 rupees. So <coughs> total amount it is assumed that he has not withdrawn 10,000 rupees from the business maybe the cash or the goods worth rupees 10,000 rupees but he has withdrawn the goods or the cash worth rupees 10,500 rupees because we calculate that bid interest because had this particular amount not withdrawn by the owner it means this would have been there in the business and if it is a capital it's a, if it is a cash if it is a funds it would have been earning something for the business maybe the rate of earning is 5 percent. So and if it is a goods then we could have sold these goods in the market for 10,500 rupees. So it means drawings are not only considered as the original amount withdrawn by the owner of the business from the business but along with the interest. So we are talking about the interest on drawing means we are here concerned about this 500 rupees <coughs> this interest part. So again we have to treat it in a double uh, manner in, in a two way effect the double effect of it will be there two fold effect of this will be there and in that case <coughs> interest on drawings when it is means when it was interest on capital that was the expense <coughs> be treated as an expense being paid by the firm to the shareholder. But when it is drawings it means person is taking kind of a loan for example we are assuming it is not a loan it never comes back to the firm once it is something is withdrawn it is withdrawn by the owner. But we say that it is a kind of the loan and it is drawn with the interest. So interest in that case the interest on drawings is a income, interest on drawings is a income. So first effect of means again it has to have the two fold effect and two fold effect if you talk about first effect here is in the profit and loss account and in the profit and loss account you show it on the credit side. This effect is shown on the credit side and when you show it on the credit side it is shown as income for example the interest on drawings as income of the firm and we will show it on the credit side of the profit and loss account and second effect of this will come in the balance sheet and in the balance sheet we will <coughs> now talk about both the amounts principal amount he has withdrawn is 10,000 rupees but he is considered to have withdrawn this amount with interest. So that interest we will add 500 rupees. So total drawings amount will work out as 10,500 rupees and that total amount of 10,500 rupees is considered as withdrawn from the business and it has to be shown in the balance sheet on the liability side in the capital. So we will have to subtract whatever the for example the amount of the capital is 100,000. 1 lakh and 10,000 rupees at the rate of with that 5 percent interest he has withdrawn. So it means he has withdrawn from the businesses less capital less drawings less drawings this amount will be 10,500 rupees along with the interest. So you will show it as <coughs> less drawings or you can show independently also less drawings 10,000 rupees and then you would say another entry less interest on drawings will be 500 rupees. So total amount he has withdrawn he invested 1 lakh rupees in the business and out of that he has withdrawn 10,000 plus interest on this 500 rupees. So it has come down so it will be now the balance amount in the capital will be left as 89,500 rupees. <coughs> this is the concept of drawings. So when any amount maybe the cash or goods or services are withdrawn they are to be recorded in the business in the books of accounts and maybe it is being drawn by the owner but the owner also is not entitled we have to record that this much of the uh, loss 
or the erosion of the capital has taken place. So, 1 lakh rupees minus drawings 10,000 and less, interest on drawings is 500 rupees. So, total is 89,500 rupees will be now the balance in the capital account. So, first effect is the interest on drawings is a income that is to be in the credit side of profit and loss account and second is in the balance sheet by adding it in the uh, sorry by subtracting it from the capital basic amount principal amount of the drawings plus interest on that total amount these two 10,500 stands withdrawn from the capital. So, 1 lakh minus 10,500 the balance amount in the capital account to be shown in the balance sheet will be 89,500 rupees. <coughs> Next, we will be talking about some means other adjustments also. We have many adjustments. So, we will be taking care of almost all the adjustments and we will be talking about the other adjustments also. And then we have now the next is the provision for doubtful debts. Next adjustment is provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts. <coughs> that is another adjustment, tenth adjustment. Provision for doubtful debts. Number one, first you have to understand what are the doubtful debts. Doubtful debts are <coughs> we had just now we discussed one item that was bad debts. And provision means doubtful debts <coughs> is also the part of the bad debts, is a kind of a bad debts. But this is a provision. This is not actual bad debt, this is a provision for the bad debt. So, that is why I now I am taking it separately after the bad debts. Bad debt as I told you <coughs> is that kind of the credit sales part which will never be recovered by the firm. The buyer has refused to make the payment or he is not able to make the payment or any other reason. So, firm is not going to receive that particular part which has become now a bad debt for us or for the firm and firm will never receive it, it is for sure. It has become for sure that they have <coughs> discussed both the buyer and seller and buyer is not able to pay. So, firm has to write it off and they will have to consider it as their loss. But doubtful debts is the next part to the <coughs> bad debts. Firm means every firm is allowed as per the Indian Companies Act, all the firms are allowed that as bad debts are happening and all the credit sales are not recoverable <coughs> by the firms. So, bad debts are taking place. So, it means bad debts should not be considered as only which has happened till the date of balance sheet or profit and loss account that becomes sure that it will not be recovered. One part is that, that which will not be recovered, but there are certain <coughs> amounts that on the date of balance sheet, there will be further more credit sales, part of which will be miss doubtful to be recovered. Because we are preparing the balance sheet and the profit and loss account on the last day of the accounting period, maybe a year you can say. So, it means if the firm is preparing their balance sheet on uh, say 31st December on any year and firm has sold on 1st of December to somebody on credit and he has been given the credit period of 60 days, right. So, it means the sales which are made on 1st December, he will be, they are made in this year, but he will be paying for those after 2 months. So, it means December 1 full and January full. So, he will pay somewhere on 31st January next year or 1st February next year, but their sales of this year which will be recovered later on. So, now <coughs> we can say that as part of the previous sales has become bad debts, part of these sales may also part of means I am not saying full, a part of these sales may also become bad debts. Because if for example, we have sold to this person for 10,000 rupees and he has to pay sold in this year, but he has to pay next year in the month of January or February 10,000 rupees. <coughs> but when the time of the payment comes, he says that I am not able to pay you 10,000 rupees. So, we would have to now negotiate with him that how much you can pay. He can say okay, give me a discount of 10 percent and I will pay you not 10,000 but 9,000 rupees or he may say that either you accept <coughs> 9,000 rupees or I will not pay you anything. 
in that case firm considers that it is always better to have a loss of 1000 rupees rather than having a loss of 10,000 rupees. So, they may say that okay, we will give you a discount of 1000 rupees, you pay us 9000 rupees and we will close your account. So, it means this kind of the <coughs> debts or the credit sales which are to be received in future, they are receivable in future as some part of the sales have become bad debts in the past. So, it means the credit sales to be recovered in the future may a part of that also become the bad debts, but and at that time it becomes a bad debt and in this year we are showing as a income of this year, it means the firm is <coughs> in trouble. So, under the convention of conservatism, if you remember those conventions, four conventions, one convention was the convention of conservatism. So, under the convention of conservatism, firms are allowed under the Indian Companies Act that they can make provisions for the doubtful debts because bad debts are happening in the business. <coughs> so, they can make the provision for the doubtful debts and so what we will do? We will have to make a provision for doubtful debts and this provision again has a twofold effect. <coughs> so, first effect of this will be in the profit and loss account and second effect of this will be in the again in the balance sheet, twofold effect of the provisions. There are two parts, one is the bad debts which has already happened, second is the provision further bad debts may also take place. So, firm should be given the benefit of that. So, in the profit and loss account what we are doing? We are debiting again now we are debiting the profit and loss account with the provisions amount also. Earlier we debited for the bad debts, for example, now with uh, bad debts amount was 1000 rupees. So, we had debited it and we have in the balance sheet we have subtracted it from the sundry debtors. So, whatever the figure of the sundry debtor will be that will be coming down as an asset by 1000 rupees one part. Second part is now the provisions for the doubtful debts that after the bad debts furthermore bad debts can also be there and if those bad debts take place for example, provisions are again of 500 rupees that 500 more may not be recovered by the firm when the actual due date will arrive. So, it will what will happen? You will first show in the profit and loss account bad debts, bad debts B oblique D 1000 rupees and then you would write there add provision for bad debts, provision for bad debts. So, total amount will become 10,500 rupees. This is the first effect of the provisions like bad debts, bad debts have happened, provisions may further bad debts may take place. And second effect is in the balance sheet. Again, when you show the sundry debtors in the balance sheet as an asset, first you will say sundry debtor is, for example, the amount is 10,000 rupees, total amount is total credit sales. So, first, what we have already learned about less bad debts, B oblique D bad debts, this is 1000 rupees. We will write in the balance sheet. Now, one more less, less provision for bad debts BDs, this is 500 rupees. So, total now the reduction will be by 10, 1500 rupees. So, now we will not be recovering, total amount will be 8000, 8, <coughs> uh, uh, to, total amount which we will not be recovering will be 8500 rupees. Uh, sorry, which will be not be recovering 1500 rupees and total amount which will be recovered expected to be recovered by the firm on account of the credit sales will be 8500 rupees. Means 1500 has means 1000 has become the bad debt already and 500 more may become the bad debt. So, total amount which is unrecoverable by the firm is going to be 1500 rupees this plus this and the balance amount which will be recovered by the firm expected by the firm on the credit sales is 8500 rupees. So, provisions for the bad debts are also like bad debts and means one has already happened another may happen, but the treatment is same both will be debited in the profit and loss account and both will be subtracted from the sundry debtors in the balance sheet, but step by step not together step by step we have to show the independent entries individual entries and we have to show it. Uh, independently separately in the profit and loss account as well as in the balance sheet. <coughs> Next is the provision for discount on debtors. This is the 
11th adjustment, but again related to the bad debts. Provision for discount on debtors, provision for discount, provision for discount on debtors. Again, this is a number one to be learned, this is again is going to be a provision. Provision, provision means this loss may further happen to the firm. So, we have to make the provision in the current years profit and loss account because these are the sales pertaining to the current year. So, this is the third thing in the row pertaining to means it is a kind of a bad debt or possible bad debts. Means has to, has to be treated, not a possible bad debt, but has to be treated like bad debts. So, provision for uh, discount on debtors will be again having twofold effect. First effect is in the profit and loss account, profit and loss account. Second effect will be in the balance sheet and as we are talking about the two effects, profit and loss account will be having the same effect <coughs> as we could see in case of the bad debts. So, with this amount also provision for the discount on debtors we will be debiting the profit and loss account. It is again a considered a possible loss. And second effect will be as we have treated the first two items bad debts and provision for the bad debts, we will be treating the same in the balance sheet by subtracting it from the sundry debtors. So, first effect it will be shown in the profit and loss account that by this amount of discount debiting the profit and loss account. So, as I told you there now there are three amounts. First amount was bad debt as we have discussed and bad debt is uh, as you assumed that it is 1000 rupees. Provision for bad debts, provision for bad debts is as we have seen the figure, we have assumed the figure is 500 rupees and now discount on debtors, disc provision for discount on debtors will be again say for example 500 rupees. So, total amount with which the we are going to debit the profit and loss account is 2000 rupees. It means this amount has already become bad debt will never be recovered for sure. This may not be recovered and if this may also become the bad debt clear. Then third is the provision for discount on debtors means now whatever the leftover sundry debtors are left, credit sales are left. How much sales were left? Sundry debtors were left with us. As we assumed it was 10,000 in the beginning. We have 1,000 as a bad debt, 500 as uh, provision for the bad debts. So, now how much is recoverable? 8,500 rupees is recoverable. But now we are talking about the third item also that for recovering this 8,500 rupees to persuade the buyers who have bought in the past to pay in future, we may have to persuade them and sometime we have to request them that you make the payment on the due date or sometime even before the due date and if you do so, we will give you a discount of 500 rupees. So, now 500 more kind of a loss the firm has to bear and the total recovery on account of the 10,000 rupees credit sales will be 8,000 rupees. Total recovery will be 8,000 rupees. <coughs> so, it means all almost they belong to the same category. This is a loss to the firm because they sold on the credit sometime in the past and they are going to recover those credit sales in future maybe even after the date of balance sheet. So, how much they had sold for 10,000 rupees and it is assumed that by 31st December of the current year when we are preparing the profit and loss account 1000 has become the bad debt, but it is not recorded in the profit and loss account so far. So, we have to record it on the day of profit and loss account. So, it means it came down to recovery came down to 9000 possible recovery. Then we are saying that as 1000 has already happened 500 further may happen it will become further loss it is 1500. So, it is 8500 rupees now the possible recovery and when it may be possible we are assuming that when the due date will, will arrive maybe in January or February next year we will have to proceed the the, the credit buyers that please make the payment either on the due date or before that and if you do so we will give you a further discount of 500 rupees. So, we will have to make a provision for that also. For example, if we are not made the provision in the current year's profit and loss account for the discount 
and on the due date or before getting the money before due date we have to give them a discount it means from where this 500 rupees will come so we have already anticipated that situation and we have already made the provision here and we have to we have that provision of 500 rupees so we can give 500 rupees discount to that buyer and or to different kind of buyers and finally the total amount to be received by the firm will be on the due date will be 8000 rupees on account of the credit sales now if for example this discount is not required to be given in future on the due date and this 500 provision we have made so where this 500 rupees will go number one second thing is we have made one more provision here for bad debts for the 500 rupees but on the due date there is no further bad debt and all buyers pay on the due date honestly they pay on the due date and this 500 rupees is also left so what to do with this amount of the 500 rupees this and this which we made two provisions but they were not required on the due date people paid honestly and we could recover out of 10,000 rupees 1,000 was a bad debt 500 rupees provisions are not required and people have paid honestly 9,000 rupees back to the firm so it means we had made the provisions but that is not utilized so what to do with that 1,000 rupees 500 plus 500 that I will discuss with you that is called as the provision for doubtful debts but we have to reverse it as we have debited with these two amounts of profit and loss account we will have to now credit the profit and loss account and we will have to pass a reverse entry next time next year if that amount does not become a bad debt and this discount is not required to be given a reverse entry has to be passed and while providing making a provision we debited the profit and loss account then while not utilizing this amount returning this amount back to the firm we will be making a reverse entry in the profit and loss account showing it as a income or a credit balance in the profit and loss account but how to do it when I will be talking about the provision for the debtors as a credit balance in the profit and in, in the trial balance we will be given two kind of balances one balance will be the debit balance second balance will be the credit balance debit balance means the loss of the year actually which with which we have to debit the profit and loss account and the credit balance means this provision was made last year but it has not been utilized so it has to be adjusted so we will have to show it as a income in the or gain in the credit side of the profit and loss account how to do that i will discuss with you when i will be talking about the credit balance of the bad debt provisions it means or even if you can be clear here that if in the trial balance you are given information that the balance of the bad debts is this much which is a normally debit balance and if credit balance is also given it means that credit balance we have to adjust we had provided in the previous year but that has not happened as a bad debt and we had not to give any discount also it means that money is saved 1000 rupees saved and we will have to pass a reverse entry show it as a income in the credit side of the profit and loss account so when we make a provision we show it in the debit side but when we do not utilize those that money set aside by provisions and that is saved we have to reverse it back to the firm we have to return it to the back in the next year's profit and loss account and we show as a income or a gain in the credit side of the next year's profit and loss account so this is all for today uh, in this lecture up to this these adjustments 11 adjustments we have talked so far remaining part of the adjustments i will be talking to you in my next lecture thank you very much mm -hmm.